on a Premier Parramatta, while the loser would have to front up against the Balmain Tigers. Thanks for joining us and welcome to our NEC Big Game Major Preliminary Semi-Final between Souths and Canterbury Bankstown. And today's match in the Winfield Cup again comes from the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well, the winner of this match will play the minor premiers Parramatta next Sunday. The loser will meet Balmain on Saturday. South and Canterbury head to head in 86, and it's one apiece. Last weekend, the Rabbits were beaten by Balmain, but in recent weeks, they have beaten Manly, Canterbury, and played a draw with Parramatta. Their full team, Crookshank, Ross, Baker, Pobji, Biles, DeJura, Coleman, Andrews, Boyle, Davidson, Roberts, Fennick, and Johnston. Many people believe for the Bulldogs, this return to the Sydney Cricket Ground today will coincide with a successful march towards their third straight premiership. Their full team readout, Curry, Farrah, Hagen, Chris Mortimer, O'Brien, Lamb, Steve Mortimer, Langmack, Robinson, Dunn, Kelly, Bugden and Tunks. And the man in charge of this major preliminary semi-final is Michael Stone. South Sydney running from right to left. Guarding the Randwick end, and here's Andrew Farrow taking it back for Canterbury. Metton pulled down by Roberts in 24. Ross in 2 and Fennick in 12. His bugged and tackled by Fennick now. 22 metres out from the Canterbury line. Steve Mortimer to Jeff Robinson. Robinson's put it down. Coleman comes up with it for South. Spreads the ball to Boyle. And Boyle hammered to the ground by Canterbury. Souths kicking off, indicating that uh, Canterbury have elected to run into this wind, and here's a penalty going to Souths. Right in front of the uprights, only 30 metres out. See it again as referee Stone decides that the best time to let them know who's in charge and what I'm all about is in the opening exchanges. Three great Rabbitohs of the past. Their current coach, George Piggins, John O'Neill, Lurch, and Ron Coote off to the right. Neil Baker, one of the game's best kickers. Former Canterbury player, he has missed it. Oh, that, that they're in could do terrible damage to the Baker confidence. No score, South and Canterbury. 22 dropout by Lamb. And the instruction, obviously, was to use the wingers as much as possible, but that was almost crazy. Andrews waited for a good three seconds for Biles, and, and of course it gave Canterbury a heap of time to peg South back in their own home. Played by Davidson, away to the right for Bronco de Jura. That kick looks okay. O'Brien can't cover in time. That was a good kick by de Jura back down the blind side. Normally Souths have an alternative. It's Phil Gould on one side of the ruck to kick and Craig Coleman on the other is the option. With Gould out the day, obviously de Jura is the man that's going to fill that option role. Jerry Lamb. Pegged by De Jura and also by Andrews. Paul Langmack on his own 32. Done. That's good heavy defence by South. Good legal stuff. Roberts, Boyle, and Johnston. Kelly through to Chris Mortimer on to Steve O'Brien. Biles and Coleman with Fennick make the tackle. And a penalty. He's caught Fennick. Let's have a look at it again. Biles is five. Fennick is 12. Coleman in seven. So there it is. Fennick has got O'Brien by the hair. And reefing at it. There's the lower grades. West defeated East 17-12 in extra time. And East defeated Manly 17-8. 
think uh, the first player I saw on the end of hair pulling was probably the, the blonde headed Easts, Russell Fairfax. He's bugged it out from dummy half. 32 metres out from the south line, Steve Mortimer tackle. And a penalty to Canterbury. Against South for inside the five. He's probably not as strong a kicker as Baker, but on the score of semi-final nerves, I think he'd be probably the coolest man in the league. Right knee strapped, left wrist and thumb strapped. 22 metres out. It's a goal for Terry Lamb. Two nil in favour of Canterbury. So Baker kicks off again with the breeze behind him, and that's a knock on against Paul Langmack. mistimed his approach to the ball and then went for the, the spectacular take. South winning the scrum, De Jura tied up by Lamb who came up on his outside. Langmack breaking from the scrum quickly. Away now to David Boyle. Met by Kelly with Dunn and forced back to the 22 line. But it's very much South on the attack trailing 2-0 as Andrews is picked off and it's a penalty to South. Canterbury inside the five. This is uh, right in front and uh, noticeably closer than Baker's previous unsuccessful attempt. It's Phil Gould with South Secretary and New South Wales League Director Terry Parker. Terry Lamb's goal just a few seconds ago made it 186 points for the season for him being the season's leading point scorer anyway Baker so far 165 for the year I'll be shocked if Baker misses this one I am it's away for Lamb and on for Hagen and Hagen cuts them out and finds Curry O'Brien Centre field kick by O'Brien. It'll go over the... Or will it? Oh, it's stopped. Set up on its point. And it's gone in touch in goal. It's coming out for a 22 place kick restart. Well, have a look at this for a freakish bounce. Crookshank had his eyes on it. He had heaps of time, and then it did that absolute nine-iron. Parramatta watching on up there, as you can see Sterling with Atkins. As the ball comes out the back of the at the back of the pack, and it's uh, from Crookshank to Ross, but he's got a ring of blue and white defence around him. That's a good piece of football by Ross. It mightn't have looked very flat. It might have even looked a little bit cowardly, but it wasn't. It was simply a case of he had nothing to do other than to submit. A good wing has got to know when to sit down. Fennick is making inroads every time he goes from dummy half. That would be worrying, Warren Ryan. Roberts goes up now. But I must say that every time... Well, Fennec's doing fine, but outside of him, Souths aren't making any inroads. Coleman turns it back to the blind for Boyle, back to Coleman. The sweep out to the right for De Jura. De Jura! De Jura! It's called back. It's a penalty to Canterbury. A Canterbury player was held the play by a South Sydney player. De Jura was going in to score. Let's see it again. As the, the ball went blindside for Boyle back to Coleman. Here's De Jura. He takes off. It was Lindsay Johnson the player uh, in question? Well, what, what did he think he was going to gain by pulling the bloke out of it? The bloke wouldn't have caught De Jura with a Rolls-Royce tied to his rear. And he's cost him six points. Well, Graham Hughes. Well, that was a silly uh, piece of football. Six points it's cost him, and the man himself, Lindsay Johnson, was uh, 
probably very, very lucky if Michael Stone really felt that that player was going to stop Jadur, and I'm, I'm with you, Ray, I didn't think he was. Uh, Johnson's lucky that he's probably not uh, leaving South Sydney with 12 men as well. A little visit to the sin bin, yes. Here's Bugden turning defence into attack. Right up inside the South 22. Well, if this is a close one and you're looking for one of your turning points or whatever you like to call it, here's Curry! Curry! Farrah's on the inside. It's play on for six more. Farrah to play it. Well, he's over the line and held up. It's got to be a five-metre scrum now. I doubt this ruling for the simple reason that Farrah looked like he was tackled a metre from the line. Now, either he was forced over the line when told to play it, or he's trying to improve his ground. I would have been inclined to think that Canterbury should have got a penalty right there. Mario Fennec, tackled by Bugden. Brett Ross. Johnston. Five tackles gone. The chase from Marker is on from Mortimer on Baker. He just kicks not bad. It's between the fullback and the winger. Back inside the Canterbury 22. O'Brien. Just two points to nil in favour of Canterbury, but keep in mind that Souths are running with the breeze. These are stupid things that Souths are doing. I just saw Robert strike for the ball in the play of the ball. It wasn't a rake. It was a kick. All he's done is restarted the tackle count. And Canterbury are now on, I think, their second tackle. And they've reached the halfway. And Kelly. Chris Morton. Tackler was Andrews. Bugden sweeps it to Steve Mortimer. This is Robinson. Baker and DeJura with Roberts make the tackle. Defending him. He's been in so many tackles, Roberts. I'm starting to check his number on his back, hoping that I'm not wrong myself. Crookshank. Well, David, where are you going? Ah, oh, he's, he's realized that Canterbury were inside the five. He's actually brought the penalty with a, a cagey little piece of football. What's Roberts up to now? Tackle-wise. Mr. Stats. 20. Johnston. Tunks went in with a shoulder charge. Four all the scrum, 6-5 the penalties to Souths. Kick is on for Baker. That's not a bad kick. It's found touch just outside the Canterbury 22. Let's take a match comment. Here's Greg. Well, we've already seen some 21 minutes gone in this... Uh, 31 minutes gone in this first half and South Sydney with the breeze at their backs they've, they've only just started in the last five minutes to kick properly, uh, they found the line on that occasion and just prior to that, Neil Baker starting at last to make Tony Curry run to the ball instead of presenting him with an easy kick, but uh, got my doubts with Canterbury Banks down going to turn around and I think they've got their game in order a lot better than South Sydney, aside from Mario Fennec no real troubles in the uh, in attack for Canterbury Banks down and as I said, Canterbury Banks and these forwards will certainly like to roll with the breeze of their backs in the second 40. Robinson play. Just short of the halfway from Bugden to Steve Mortimer, Terry Lamb, and cuts out Chris Mortimer, picks up Michael Hagan. He's tackled from behind by Bronco de Jura, but only after he'd made a good run. Play back to Chris Mortimer. He goes to the open side. He puts in the, the left foot kick. It's going down and... Uh, It'll be uh, picked up by South Sydney's Baker. He'll be trapped in goal, I think. He has to pass. He picks up Les Biles. Biles comes to Kelly. And Kelly is tackled inside. Well, Kelly makes the tackle inside the South 22. Crookshank comes up to take a run out. Ooh, that was dangerous stuff from South. Davidson. 
South need every bit of his power today, Davidson. Roberts, Boyle. That's better stuff, really, from South. Just those few plays. He really went ahead. Baker now. Took a look. Put it down in between the fullback curry, the ball coiling back to curry. Oh, through. 12 metres from the halfway. Mugden. Tackle by Fennick. Steve Morton. Langley. And that coming back in and meeting the defence of Mario Fennick and Michael Andrews. And that slowly to his feet. Steve Morton. Kick from him is going down and bouncing fairly sweetly for Crookshank. I'm going to use the adjective fairly because as it turned out it wasn't. Well, Crookshank is proving very elusive. That's a magnificent run by the young fullback. That's a great run by young Crookshank. Coleman Boyle. Coleman for Johnston. Fennec again. Bronco de Jura. Play right on the halfway. Coleman. Baker. Away now for Pobji. Tackled inside the touchline. I don't think there are any areas where Canterbury are weak, but at the moment they're just not playing well at marker and South's taking advantage of it. The Bulldogs have got to improve their marker defence. Coleman's kick forces Curry to pick it up. He comes back. He gets away from one. And he's right out to the 22 line, Tony Curry. Play back to Steve Mortimer and given to Mark Bugden. I guess Big Brother sitting up in the stand with those Eels players. The first half has five and three quarter minutes to run. Two nil in favour of Canterbury running into the breeze, which they have been told by the meteorologists or the wind assessors will pick up in the second half. As I said, it's becoming very technical. Terry Lamb. That's uh, Curry breaking through. O'Brien goes over the halfway. He beats Roberts. He doesn't beat Coleman. Gets it inside for Lamb. The ball comes in field and South's come up with it. Quick push of the ball to the left is on for Souths. Biles is turned inside by heady play by Langmack. He realized that it was on out to the left for South, so he got up in between the ball carrier and the intended ball receiver. Turned him back inside. Roberts. Davidson. You see, the impact of Phil Gould being out of the South Sydney side is one thing. But this man with the ball, Craig Coleman, doesn't have the latitude that he normally would with Phil Gould in the team. He, he really is a second halfback with Gould in the team. Well, what the opposition has to do if, if, if Gould is in the side is they've got two men to mark. Whatever they'll play, South will play Coleman one side of the ruck and Gould the other. But now it's obvious whatever side of the play the ball Coleman is, that's the side the play's going. Tunks. Tackled by Bronco de Jure. Talking with Gould, I said to him before the match, what do you think? And he said, I think they're special for Rabbits. Langmack, I suppose he had to say that, though. Chris Mortimer. Steve Mortimer. Now it's done. Well, I know they got the breeze at their back, South. And Canterbury leading 2-0, but I guess with South, the longer they hang in, the better the chance they become. And that kick by Mortimer finds the line just eight metres away from the South line with three and a half minutes of time remaining in the first half. There's the NEC replay. There it is. 2-0. And with the sound of Michael 
Five stones whistle. Let's come back to South and Coleman. As we said earlier, submits to the touchline. There's Miles. Neither doing one thing nor the other. That's Johnston. With South, so I always get the impression you've got to get about them and, and whack a score on the board against them. While they've got, while they can see you, while you're still in their sights, they'll just pull out that courage, that raw South Sydney courage. And uh, they can, they can build on that. Their confidence builds on it. As Baker kicks, but it's gone straight to Curry. He's had a busy afternoon and what he's done, he's done well. Tackler was Brett Ross. Now it's Hagen and Farrow working it. Farrow's with the ball. Oh, shoulder charge by Boyle. Saw Farrow go to the ground. Langmack. Terry Lamb. Michael Hagen. Steve Mortimer. Oh, David Crutcher knocking on. 18 metres out from his own line. Here's a chance with one minute and 25 seconds to go for Canterbury to come up with this scrum win and pile a try on the board before half time. Can they do it? One by the dogs. A dummy by Hagen. He's gone back inside. The ball goes down. It's picked up by Pobji, and it's a penalty to Canterbury Bankstar. You see on our replay, Terry Lamb was held out of the play, and Mike, Mike Stone, the referee's decided the South Sydney player in question, Bronco de Jura, has got to spend time in the sin bin for the offence. Bronco de Jura, five minutes in the sin bin. He was given the time with one minute of the first half remaining. Five minutes in the sin bin for number six, Bronco Jura from South Sydney. It was his tackle on Terry Lamb, or his infringement on Terry Lamb, that brought the time. Bronco has gone back to the sin bin, probably believing, I, I hope for his sake, his confidence sake, that... Uh, he thinks he's given two to save six. Terry Lamb would not get an easier kick at goal. 11 metres out, right in front. There's the goal by Terry Lamb. The extras are there, or should I say the two points extra for Canterbury are there. And they lead by four points to nil at half time. Here's Graham Hughes. I just wonder if we're going to take a leaf out of the book from yesterday. Balmain won the toss. They decided in that first half to run into a breeze against Manly Ringer, and they came up trumps. Canterbury have tried to do likewise today. They lead now on the scoreboard 4-0 over South. Nothing wrong with the South Sydney defence, but a couple of key men for me in the second half will be Michael Hagen, who just tried to dummy his way through then, and also Terry Lamb, as I look to Canterbury in the next 40 minutes to spread the ball a lot wider and a lot more often. Andrew Farrah, I believe, Graham has gone to the centres, and Sandy Campbell comes on. Yes, yeah, Sandy Campbell out there on the uh, right wing in 16, and the problem for Chris Mortimer, uh, the doctors are checking out a knee injury problem. He, a couple of, two or three times, Canterbury Banks down went wide, and uh, he just couldn't get with the wingers himself. Uh, it might be a bit of a, a real headache for them over the next fortnight or so. So the breeze behind Canterbury in the second half. And taken on the foot there by Michael Andrews. And Biles comes out to the 22. As the tackle counts, South have had to make 133 to Canterbury's 94. Roberts 27 and Boyle 26. That's a very, very high individual count for both those players. Baker. And the first receiver to take that, that, that kick. And uh, it's Michael Hagen for Canterbury who will play the ball just a few metres on his side of the halfway. Campbell. Kelly. 
Again, short pass for Curry. Curry's gone down to the 32, picks up Andrew Farrar. The ball goes inside. It uh, has been kicked through by Souths, but the referee is ordering a knock-on. He was playing the advantage to Souths. He's taken it back for a knock-on against Canterbury, and the touch judge comes in now. Now, this could be to do with Mario Fennec. Fennec is going over with Lindsay Johnston. I thought it might have been something that Fennec did in the back play that involved he and Peter Kelly. But uh, Lindsay Johnston is the man there with Fennec. I'm pretty sure that it concerns him more than the captain who's whose right it is to listen in to what was going on. This Canterbury, is Coleman out. Canterbury just starting to open up now in the last few minutes of the first half and what we've seen early in this second half. Their backs have had plenty of the ball. They obviously feel that if they're going to win this game that they can beat South Sydney out wide. Fennec away from dummy half, gaining a few metres. Themselves taking it out from their own 22. At this stage, let's take it to the sideline. Here's Graham Hughes with um, David Gillespie. Dave, that left hand, uh, the, the work action, how are you placed now? What's the story from the doctors? No, but I've um, let me out for the day just to watch the football. I've got to go back in the night and uh, possibly have it operated on Tuesday to take, the, uh, take it off below the first joint. Well, that's unfortunate for you, but is, is, is that any advantage, any way for you as, as regards to possible pain? Probably be an advantage, mate, to get rid of it because it's, um, as it is, it's only, uh, it's, it's only dead as it, as it is now, you know, and um, as soon as they get it off, you know, it'll help quicker, and then I'll be um, on, on my way back to recovery. Does that help David Gillespie with regards to, say, a possible kangaroo tour? Oh, no worries, mate. As I said, as soon as they get it off and, and um, it starts to get men, you know, men, um, it'll be only a matter of weeks before, I, um, before I'm right, I hope. This must be a bonus for Canterbury. They decided to run into the breeze, and yet they've been able to turn around with a 4 0 lead. Yeah, mate. Well, we've made a couple of um, breaks out, the, out in the backs, and um, you know, Tony Curry getting his confidence back. You know, he's made a couple of breaks too. I'll be looking for him. I'll be looking for him in the second half to inject himself a bit more. I think. Okay, David. Good luck with that injury. Thanks, Grant. Peter Tunks. Penalty went to Canterbury against Roberts for making the tackle and then taking the player over the sideline. Kelly has no marker. Blindside rush for Langmack and O'Brien. Again, they make ground off it. O'Brien looks at the line. Langmack will score. Langmack has gone in to score for Canterbury. Well, it's a play that Canterbury used so often. It's simply a decoy going to the open side, and here it... It seemed to me quite simple that they had two on two, but Les Viles, the man who should have been marking O'Brien, appeared to get lost. The try is scored by Paul Langman. Well, what happened? The South Sydney defence was waiting for Canterbury to spread the ball wide on the open side. They didn't do it. They hit that narrow 10 metres right near the sideline. O'Brien made the break after a pass by Langmack. Langmack backed up to take the return pass on the inside and fought his way through the tackle for the four points. Paul Langmack, the try scorer, the season with Halifax. Eight nil to Canterbury Bankstown. The kick looks okay off the boot, and it's a great kick by Terry Lamb from the touchline. Canterbury ten, South yet to score. centers in the second half Steve Mortimer Tackler was Coleman Lamb Hagen picked up by Pobgy for South 
is a very important part of the match for South Sydney. Canterbury just starting to look as if they're getting away from the Rabbitohs. South have got to now settle down, concentrate, get their game in order, and if possible, get points on the board as quickly as they can to restore confidence. David Boy. Davidson. Inside the Canterbury 32 line. On to Coleman and away now for Baker. It's a penalty for South. Against Canterbury inside the five and this kick for Baker will be right in front. 23 metres out. The attendance going into the, the frame. 24,573. Right in front, 22 out for Baker. He's had two similar kicks, and this time he's got it. Well, he absolutely needed that. That was essential. Coleman, Baker, Boyer. Oh, that's Andrews, I beg your pardon. Galloping into some space. He's 12 metres into Canterbury's territory. Coleman. Through Podgy to Dejera, Dejera, 20 metres out from the line. Pulled down by O'Brien, that indicates how desperate Canterbury were. Now it's Coleman, intercepted by O'Brien. Shades of 84. And O'Brien intercepts. Steve Folks in 14. Back from that, that groin operation that put that fairly huge punctuation mark in his season. Tunks to play it. He restarted the count. This is the second. Langback. Oh, that's punishing stuff from Boyle and Andrews. Andrews coming off at not second best, but third best. Still on his haunches. Bugden. gone for Canterbury. Lamb. Kick will be fielded down near the goal line by Crookshank. Farrah and Kelly tidying up. Brett Ross. Kelly the tackler. Davidson. Fennec. They're 30 metres out from their line. Johnston. That would be four tackles gone for South. Davidson grinding that ball down the ground to a point about eight metres from the halfway. And a penalty to South. Hagen to play it. And back to Steve Mortimer. This is Steve Folks. Kelly and Langmack hitting up on that blind side. And again, they found South Sydney short on numbers. Campbell kicks ahead. He might score. Oh! Crookshank got a hand to it and it went over the dead ball line. Well, every time Canterbury stack this blind side, it seems to me that they're outnumbering Souths on every occasion. Well, the Souths are flirting with danger, Ray. What they're doing is they're playing their two centres together on the open side, which is leaving their 5 8 to fill on the, in on the blind. Now, if he's not concentrating and not alert, Canterbury are going to make yards there every time. The drop kick comes down fairly shallow and Farrow goes charging back towards the South 22 line. Now you've got the situation at the moment on back on that blind side, you've got the two South Sydney front rowers holding. So if, if Canterbury can play the ball quickly now and fire the ball back there, they're going to make yardage again. They come the, the same way again. And Tunks will play it 15 metres away from the South line.
Kelly. Now they're set to the right, Canterbury. Mortimer, Lamb. The kick across by Lamb. Brett Ross read it. He might make the field of play. It's going to take plenty of work. No, it's a line dropper. The Canterbury have got south by the scrap of their neck down there. Well rehearsed. Well executed. It just so happened that this man was the sole survivor for South Brett Ross. Well, that sort of tactics are very Canterbury-like display. They've got South Sydney pinned down in their own quarter, and it would be unlike Canterbury to let them out. Dunn goes back, and he gets it out the back to carry him on to Steve Mortimer as we take a match comment from Graham Hughes. Well, the last two or three minutes have really underlined the basic difference between the two teams. South Sydney went in possession too often. They're, they're letting players like Les Davidson, Lindsay Johnston, David Ball take the ball up with no support. Look at Canterbury. There's Kelly, and right off his hip, another forward. Yes, and they seem to hunt in, uh, in unison. Kelly and Langmack, they're always together as the ball is turned inside for Curry. He'll play the ball back to Paul Dunn. They're 12 metres out from the south line and they hit the blind side again. Langmack, Grubber kicks ahead and it's been let go by Bronco de Jura. So Souths can breathe easy just for a moment. So Langmack uh, and Kelly are hunting as a pair, as I said, and Lamb and Mortimer are setting it all up there calling the tune, using the kicking game now, but they're pumping away at the blind side at a ratio, I would think, of around about four to one. Of course, just when you decide to stack the blind side and mark them up, they'll probably punch the ball wide to the open side and, and catch you out there. But really, defence comes down to one-on-one. -on -one. And I've got a horrible feeling that that's just what Souths aren't doing. Somebody is standing there marking nothing. Boyle. Baker's kick driven down towards the, the scoreboard corner and finding it. Well, Souths for the first time in what seems an age. We've got some hope. They probably won't come out with the football after the scrum, but at least they're down in Canterbury's territory. They're trailing 10 to 2. <laughs> 16 and a half minutes of time remain. As Canterbury win the scrum, there hasn't been a scrum won against the, the fee today, and there hasn't been a turnover in the match. As Curry, one of Canterbury's better players, is tackled. Folks, out to the 22. South's getting some replacements ready. As Farrah is tackled in the middle of the ground. Seven five, the handling errors. Canterbury play on, and it is play on. And Hagen gets it away to O'Brien. O'Brien gets around the fullback, and he brushes off Baker. And O'Brien goes in to score for the Bulldogs. That's the ball game. Fourteen points to two. So the kick by Lamb was knocked down. Hagen came up with it, gave it immediately to O'Brien. He beat David Crookshank. He fended off Neil Baker. And uh, from there, it was just simply a case of running and putting the ball down. We saw Canterbury score a try similar to this on Monday night. A good effort by South Sydney to charge the ball down, but then they had no one back to cover it up. It was picked up by Hagen, on to O'Brien. I thought he'd go on with it himself here, O'Brien, when he'd beaten the fullback. But the cover defence was able to pick him up. He looked, he looked inside after he'd beaten the cover defence, didn't need any further support and did the job on his own. He's a very fine finisher, this fellow, Steve O'Brien. 22 is Paul Roberts. Highly rated. Baker's off, so is Andrews. 
Now, what changes have been made, Graham? Neil Baker's off. On in 18 is Mark Ross. Michael Andrews is off. On is uh, Wayne Chisholm in 23. And Lindsay Johnson has left the field. And out there in 22 is Paul Roberts. Fourteen to two in favour of Canterbury. Fourteen minutes of time remaining. And Lamb from eight metres in from touch. That looked better off the boot. No worries. Put the score on the board. Canterbury 16. Leeds South Sydney 2. Well, tomorrow night, of course, the Rugby League will announce at their, their glamour function, the Rothmans medal, the player of the year. I guess with just under five to go, we're entitled to ask. I can't ask Graham because he's the man in Winfield who's put it together. But who's your forecast for the Rockets? You're making it hard. A lot of good players. I stuck my neck out last week with Des Haslam. I've got no reason to change that. Well, I'll stay with Sterling. And of course, then on Thursday night of uh, the coming week. Uh, 10 p.m. telecast. It's just slightly pre-recorded. The telecast of the... I know it's the night that the Rugby League ladies enjoy most. Of course, that's the one where they get invited. And that'll be carried out at the Channel 10 studios, the Dally M Awards of 1986. 10 o'clock to air as the ball comes away from Fennec and goes out to Webb for South tackled well outside the Canterbury 22. A little chip from Craig Coleman, fielded easily by Michael Hagan, who's had a, a splendid game. And here's a penalty going to Souths for shepherding against Canterbury. This is Paul Roberts. There's the siren. A match that in the first half was very, very tight. Has seen Canterbury unfold their attacking weapons in the second half and uh, defeat a, a rather disappointing South Sydney, I think, to be kind to them. 16 points to two. Langmack and O'Brien scored tries. Lamb kicked four goals. Baker kicked one penalty goal. 16 to 2 in favour of Canterbury over South. The Dogs will play the Eels.